Hello and welcome to this India Today e-conclave wellness series special where we are kicking off with a very special guest. Joining us today from the United States of America from the West Coast is Dr. Deepak Chopra. Dr. Chopra is renowned author, doctor, motivational guru and one of the prime advocates in the world of alternative medicine. Appreciate your joining us uh, Dr. Chopra uh, here Thank in you. Corona times. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I want to come to the big question that's being asked and one of the reasons why we've initiated this wellness series is because a number of people are feeling extremely stressed out and anxious being locked down at home for such a long time. What is your message to them? What is the way to relieve stress and anxiety, Dr. Chopra? Okay, first of all, it's really important to recognize that stress can be as much of a killer as the infection itself. Stress causes what are called cytokine storms or acute inflammation on top of the chronic inflammation that is already there for people at risk. So if this cytokine storm is unabated, it leads to morbidity and mortality. And if stress is not controlled, of course, then that leads to biological havoc. What are some of the ways? Well, one can instantly manage stress by observing your reaction to react. So anytime you feel, anytime you feel stressed, you can stop. It's an acronym, S-T-O-P. So S stands for stop. T, take a few deep breaths, about three deep breaths and smile from your head to your toes. Smiling and breathing changes the autonomic activity of the nervous system. O, observe the sensations in your body without judgment. And P, proceed with awareness and choice. Mm -hmm. It's a learned habit. Once you get into the habit of doing this, you don't need to get stressed. You, all you have to do is press the pause button, mm -hmm. observe your reaction to react. Now, of course, there are many other ways to do this, as you know, uh, yoga, meditation, pranayam, and right. many, many others. You know, I, I, I saw somewhere where you've written that there is a seven, you have a seven point mantra for well-being. Now, well-being is as important now than ever in Corona times when you're locked down at home. What, are the, what is this seven point mantra that you have? Okay, so only 5% of disease related gene mutations are fully penetrant. Let me explain what that means. Only 5% of genetic mistakes guarantee disease the rest are connected to lifestyle mm -hmm. so the seven things that we know that cause self-regulation or what we call homeostasis which is a simple technical term for self-healing these are sleep sleep meditation and stress management yes movement but particularly the movements associated with yogasana mm -hmm. and pratyahara and uh, breathing deep breathing because they stimulate the vagus nerve, which counteracts the stress response. Healthy emotions like love, compassion, joy, equanimity. And food which is rich in maximum diversity of plant-based foods. Uh, in other words, vegetarian food, but predominantly plant-based because that changes the microbiome, which is two million extra genes that you acquire mm -hmm. on your way to after you are born, these are bacterial genes. You only have 25,000 human genes, but you have 2 million bacterial mm -hmm. genes that can be instantly changed by food. Some connection with nature, mm -hmm. which would be my sixth point, and the seventh would be self-awareness. But by self-awareness, I, I mean awareness of body, awareness of mind, but also awareness of relationships, ultimately awareness of awareness, which is called samadhi. Right. Let, let's come though to the point once again of stress because I think that needs further uh, elaboration because that is, as you said, just as much as a, of a killer in the times in which we live as possibly Corona is. People are anxious about job security. People are anxious about what will happen a month from now. There are students whose examinations have got delayed. What would you suggest to them? How do they, on a day-to-day -day basis, Dr. Chopra, deal with this constant stress? Yes. So, you know, there are two kinds of stress. One is uh, acute stress, which causes acute inflammation, as in when you have pneumonia or you have an injury. 
Then there's the stress you're talking about, which is acute episodes of stress and a chronic low-grade anxiety and a low-grade depression that accompanies the perception of threat, mm -hmm. physical threat, emotional threat, psychological threat, it doesn't matter. And this is what causes biological havoc. Deep breathing in the moment is the most effective way to counter stress. But I know what you're talking about is a larger issue. And it's actually a philosophical issue too. Right now, everybody in the world is experiencing some degree of existential anxiety. Uh, they're experiencing some degree, maybe even the possibility of the fear of death. They're experiencing for the first time, not taking their existence for granted. So, which is a very interesting thing. We only take our existence not for granted when there's a crisis, when in fact, we should be grateful for existence every moment. Mm -hmm. So if you simply ask yourself one thing, what am I grateful for? And feel your body and experience your mental space in that moment, stress will go away. Now, long-term, of course, what we're going through, by the way, collectively, worldwide, is a grief process, which means we took something for granted, now we've lost it. So grief goes through certain st stages. First, there is victimization, why me? Well, it's not just you, it's everyone. And then it goes through anger and resentment and grievances, and finally resignation and helplessness. And in some people, acceptance. And when acceptance happens, you find meaning. So right now, the thing to ask is, and some people are already asking, how do I reinvent my life? How do we reinvent our business? How do we ask for help? How we give help? You know, we have an ecosystem through the internet where everybody is connected with everybody else. We can ask people for help. We can give people help, financial help, psychological help, emotional help, give them attention, appreciation, affection. And you see, you start to feel better. The best way to feel better is to make somebody else feel better. That's a, that's a lovely way to put it. The best way to feel better is to make someone else feel better because, you know, we're all stuck in a family at home. Uh, each one with our own anxieties and our own uh, uh, challenges. Do you believe that this is a great moment to restore the sense of the family as a unit to try and share much more with each other? Would you recommend that at least spend an hour just talking to each other? Well, actually, you know, the studies show that you need to spend six hours in social interaction every day. Otherwise, you get depressed or anxious. So, of course, these days you can do that through the Internet. You can send somebody an emoticon, a hug, a kiss, and you can give them a dopamine hit. It doesn't matter where they are. You can change their biology. You can uh, have them... Uh, get a dopamine boost, boost, a serotonin boost, a opiate boost, just by communicating them. And four things, attention, deep listening, affection, telling them you care, appreciation, noticing something good about them, and attention, but also acceptance. Don't try to change anyone right now. It's hard enough for you to change yourself. You know, I've, I've got a, a message from, uh, a question from Priya Patel. She says, I have been at home for the last several weeks. I am missing office. Now, that's very strange. Uh, you know, most people are perhaps now having forcibly to work from home. But she says she's missing the very idea of going to office. So how does she recreate that atmosphere at home in a manner that she feels comfortable with herself? I think that's what she's trying to ask. Yeah, so, you know, right now I've created an office in my home. You can create an office in your home and you can actually keep the same hours. You can keep the same hours as you would if you were going to office. You could do the same thing. Stand up every hour, stretch a little bit, mm -hmm. engage, take short breaks, engage with other people these days on social media. And many companies that I uh, know of are actually now creating virtual offices for their uh, for the people who work in the office space. So you can create a virtual office environment the way, you know, through these technologies, and they're getting better. I should tell you that every time there's been a pandemic or a crisis in the last 100 years, mm -hmm. there have been creative opportunities and technologies that have come out. The AM radio came out 
during the Great Depression and the First World War. Mm -hmm. Television came out after the Holocaust and the atomic bomb and so on and so forth. The internet came out after the uh, 1988 recession. 2000, we had mobile phones. Now we have uh, everything from deep learning to artificial intelligence to all these apps to VR to augmented immersive dream ex experiences. And right now, even as we speak, new apps, new technologies are being developed to track uh, movement of people, sure. antibodies, vaccines. So a lot of good is also going to come out at the end of the, this the, crisis. But, but the reason, uh, uh, Dr. Chopra, this becomes important is because, let's be honest, human beings are social animals. We are not used, yes, particularly absolutely. in India, to the concept of social distancing. We like our mass gatherings. We like to go to the cinema. We like to go to restaurants. We like to be, uh, you know, uh, party with friends. Now, we are we are not being allowed to do that. We are being asked to stay at home, wear masks, stay away from people. So, how does someone who is otherwise used to being a very sociable person then fall back on himself or herself in times like this? How do you... Do you recommend that they spend more time reading? Do they con uh, ring up all their friends every day? Do it via phone? What do you suggest? You know, in ancient times in India, there were three things that were emphasized for well-being. Seva, Simran, Satsang. Seva means selfless service. Mm -hmm. Right now, don't think about yourself. Think about who you can help. Simran engage in a practice of self-reflection every day. Who am I? What do I want? What's my purpose? What can I be grateful for? And Sangha is community. So it's your community at family, your children, your friends, your parents, your significant other, but it's also the community at large. So we do our best right now to engage in every aspect that we can. It is true. If humans or even primates are isolated and don't have physical contact, real physical contact, then their emotional brain goes also out of balance. So physical contact is actually very important. But right now we have to take this precaution because otherwise the pandemic spreads with a very great speed. And you also know that flattening the curve doesn't mean that you will, all you do is delay the onset. So you have, not, have to wait till the curve flattens and then it goes down before we can take these risks. But, so but people given, have to ask themselves, but given is the my fact, life more valuable or the fact that I enjoy party? But, but given the fact that uh, physical distancing is reduced, do I need to increase the emotional quotient in a way in my life? Try and find new ways in which I can satisfy myself emotionally. Maybe yes, develop, maybe. maybe have a new hobby. Would you recommend that people sort of discover a new ho hobby or a new challenge for themselves? There are many things people can do. They can watch funny movies. They can um, uh, tell jokes. They can see other uh, films. They can engage in art, in music, in dancing, in poetry, in storytelling. And uh, in, of course, you know, my favorite are mind-body practices like Tai Chi, Qigong, mm -hmm. yoga, deep breathing. These have direct effect on your nervous system, even storytelling. If you listen and uh, you're inspired by good stories, the neuroanatomy of your brain changes. Every experience that you have, it doesn't matter, eating, breathing, digestion, metabolism, but also psychological experiences, memories, thoughts, imagination, all these influence our emotions and emotions regulate a part of our brain called the limbic system, which is responsible for both immune modulation and endocrine modulation. So emotional engagement is absolutely necessary right. to prevent stress. Ashok Chakravarti asks, I am trying to manage stress through yoga and my uh, wife is doing it through meditation. What would you suggest? Is yoga meditation actually helpful in times like this? It's extremely helpful. The yoga asanas, you know, the word asana means seat of awareness. So the yoga asanas specifically target different organs in the body through the vagus nerve, which is an anti-inflammatory nerve. And meditation does the same thing. And pranayam does the same thing. So if you combine the three, you'll be really very effective but any 
one of those is effective. Mm -hmm. The fastest and most immediate is deep breathing or pranayama. You know, there is one element, uh, you know, we live in uncertain times. How do you deal with uncertain times in terms of the fact that should we just forget about what life is going to look like a month from now? Will the lockdown still be in place and simply live in the moment? Is that easier said than done? How does one, Dr. Chopra, live in the moment? It's, it's as you said, it's uh, easier said than done, but it's also a learned process. You can live in the moment by periodically asking yourself, am I in the moment? Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, you can live in the moment by periodically stopping and observing your breath or sensations in the body. Uh, you have to remember that the worst use of imagination is stress and the best use of imagination is creativity. When you live in the moment, you have access to creativity. So right now, it is important to harness your creativity, find opportunities to reinvent your body, to reinvent your relationships. In other words, to reinvent your entire life. It's true. When we go back mm -hmm. and when this pandemic abates, life is not going to be the same. The old structures are falling. And, you know, in fact, the United States is doing worse than any other country in the world because everybody here took their existence and their lifestyle totally for granted. And, you know, COVID-19 doesn't respect national or international boundaries or even other boundaries. Sure. So right now, everybody should be thinking about how do I reinvent my life, my relationships, my job, my interaction with the environment, my diet, my body. This is an opportune moment. The biosphere is already repairing itself. I heard that there are flamingos that can be seen in the beaches or seas of Bombay and that uh, no, they are you can New see Bombay. the Himalayas from hundreds of miles away. That's right, they are. The flamingos are back to New Bombay and you know, looking at those pictures. In are. fact, so, someone suggested that we should, you know, this is a good time also to, uh, you know, open up your family album, look at old pictures, dive into nostalgia, sort of uh, recount Absolutely. all the happy memories of life. Is that, is that something Absolutely. you recommend? Absolutely. When you are feeling stress, particularly, feel your body because, you know, stress causes distressful emotions. So when you're feeling stress, feel your body, close your eyes and remember a happy experience. Immediately the sensation will change. Dr. Chopra, there is uh, Ashika Menon who wants to know, uh, do you have any advice for people who would like to involve their children in any form of mindfulness practice? Now, do you, how, do you, how does one uh, redraw the relationship between parents and young children who perhaps for the first time are stuck at home, they can't even go to the park and play? So before the age of five years, children should not be taught any meditation or any disciplined activity at all. Children like to play. And so that's the most important thing before the age of five years. Also, children don't listen to what you're saying. They watch you. And at the up to the age of five years, they watch your eye movements, mm -hmm. your facial expressions, the tone of your voice and your body language. And if you are stressed, they will get stressed. So if you are playing with them, if you are smiling, if your body language reflects playfulness and joy and curiosity and wonder and storytelling, that's the best thing you can do for children. After the age of five, yes, you can say, okay, let's keep quiet, right. silent for five minutes. And then slowly increase that. And then increase that with mind-body games. And even these days, there are amazing video games that, that are available that will help you self-regulate your emotions, your body language, your eye movements, mind-body coordination. There's a lot of opportunity right now for entertainment, storytelling, music, poetry, and uh, sure. all the things I mentioned. You know, uh, you, I, I believe you and Oprah Winfrey are bringing out some kind of a, uh, a video or is it a uh, is it a lesson for no. people, a meditation no, no, kit? No. Oh, oh. What's it about? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I thought you were talking about something else. Yeah. We are offering a meditation for uncertain times uh, and it's offered right now. You can go to our website, chopracentermeditation.com and download it. And so far, between 6 to 10 million people 
have taken advantage of the uh, meditation that Oprah and I are offering online. And and I, I just, you know, Oprah's personality, of course, is she's out there full of beans, full of exuberance. Um, do we need to look for role models to uh, at all at times like this? People who we should be looking up to as possible role models? Uh, I have done so all my life. Uh, my parents were my first role models. And after that, you know, but there were uh, great luminaries in the world who were my role models, even though some of them I never met, like Mahatma Gandhi and later on Nelson Mandela and even others like Martin Luther King Jr. I think uh, the more you uh, have access to role models who are basically archetypes that represent some greater vision, right. a bigger cause, that helps a lot, yes. Let me ask you in conclusion, how does one keep completely calm in times like this? Uh, you know, uh, where does one get, is it an inner calmness that one must cultivate over time? You know, I don't necessarily meditate. So what would you recommend for someone like me who doesn't meditate and does a daily job in front of a television screen? You could just sit quietly for five minutes before you start your day. Mm -hmm. And you could ask yourself a couple of questions like, uh, what kind of day do I want to have? What is my purpose? What is What am I grateful for? Uh, who am I beyond this social persona that I have? And you could also introduce, I have a habit of self-reflection mm -hmm. and deep meditation, but a little bit of self-reflection. And then introduce intentions. Right in your uh, body mind and usually what i do is i introduce four intentions joyful energetic body loving compassionate heart reflective alert mind and lightness of being right. and service something like that and then what you do is your day is guided by the intentions you've already introduced during the day dr chopra so i just have 30 seconds tell me how is you know how have you what is the one new thing you've learned in the last month of corona Sitting at home, what is the new, the, what is, what's the new hobby you've learned? Surrender to the wisdom of uncertainty every day. Surrender? To the wisdom of uncertainty. That is the key to creativity. Surrender to the wisdom of un uncertainty. That is the key to creativity. You're saying this is a great opportunity in a way to get our creative genes really uh, expanding. Dr. Chopra, it. it has always been a pleasure talking to you. You've given us a sense of calm in these troubled times. I appreciate that you've taken the time off to join us there from California. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Deepak Thank Chopra you. joining me there as part of the India Today Wellness Series. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay at home. Bye for now.